Hey, what's up everyone? Brian Schultz, Determined Dad here. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I made a video, but, you know, been busy. Whole family got sick for like a few weeks, uh, which was pretty intense. I mean, I haven't been sick in probably like four years, so it was it was pretty debilitating. But, you know, we came through it. Everyone's happy, healthy, uh, and so everything's, everything's good. But today I just wanted to talk real briefly. Maybe not so briefly. I don't know. We'll see how long this goes. But I wanted to talk about a topic that I'm passionate about. And it's kind of a sensitive topic for a lot of people, but it is financial stability, uh, especially in your household, right? Like as a family unit, just so family finances, right? Uh, so my wife and I went yesterday and we did our taxes and it was great, right? Everything went perfect and kind of, I mean, better than I thought it was going to go. And over the last year, I've been learning a lot about just the U.S. tax code and, and how taxes work, right? And how the wealth utilize taxes to their credit and how, you know, you and I can too. And and let me start by saying that nothing I say here is financial advice, right? I'm not a financial advisor at all. Uh, I'm just a dude. And so I'm just saying that what has worked well for us, right? So to, to explain our situation a little bit, right? My wife and I were talking about this. We were talking about how, you know, how blessed we are and how thankful we are in, in this regards because, you know, so we're living in, we're living in Arizona. Uh, we're living about 45 minutes outside of Phoenix, roughly. And my wife's a stay-at-home mom and I work, right? So we're on a single income, uh, growing family in a house, have a mortgage, all that stuff, right? And we were talking about how like we really are living like like a dream, you know, like like what like what people would call like the American dream, right? We're both busy as heck. We're always doing something. You know, from the time I wake up, I woke up two hours ago at four, at six, right? Like we're both always doing something. But when we take a step back and look at it, it's it's what people would call the American dream. And we're fortunate enough to be living it. Right. And it is possible. And I think that finances, money, it's something that people are really sensitive to talk about because if you're not doing the best or if you're not doing as well as the person you're talking about with it, it, it just kind of, it's a, it's a crappy conversation. You know, it just kind of sucks. Like, like if you're talking with like, let's say you're 25 and you're talking with like, a 65 year old, right? And they're talking about how everything was back when they were 25 and how they had a house or a duplex, right? And they were able to like push lawnmowers and pay for college or, or whatever, right? Um, it just, it makes you feel so inadequate because of where you are and where society is right now, like when you're 25 and it doesn't translate, it doesn't correlate, right? So I think when approaching finances and money, there's like a journey, there's like, it, it's a journey that you take, right? There's a ton of videos on YouTube about just how to get rich quick or like investing in this crypto, investing in that thing, doing this drop shipping, whatever. There's like tons of nonstop videos about how to just do one thing and then be set for life, right? And, you know, it's true that you may, you may catch lightning in a bottle once, right? Like you may find the one thing that gets you money quickly, but if you don't have a principled outlook on money and how it works and what it is and how to use it, then even if you catch wealth quickly, you're just going to, over time, you'll lose it, all right? Like you're not, you're not just going to keep, again, catching lightning in a bottle every single time your money's low just to spike back up, right? So the journey that I took, I wanted to share a couple books with you guys about just where, where I went to, the knowledge I sought to kind of get where I am, right? And... I wanted to start with this book. So, Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey, right? So again, this is a journey, right? So if you know absolutely nothing about money and how it works, let's say you're like the average American that's got like $1,000 in their savings account and just submerged in debt, right? Credit cards, mortgage, car payments, on and on and on, student loans, whatever. If you know absolutely nothing, about money and if you want to actually turn your life around to get better at it, I would highly recommend uh, this book, right? Again, Total Money Makeover. 
So we'll we'll get to the flaws of this book in a second, right? There's a lot there's a lot of information in it that's outdated, in my opinion, that doesn't really work in today's marketplace. But the core of it, I think, is sound. Where he pretty much talks about like, hey, you know, uh, the seven step plan. He goes through a seven step plan. Like, okay, you know, get this much money as an emergency fund in your house, right? And then get this much money as an emergency fund, like save up some money for like six months of expenses if you lost your job tomorrow. Okay, great, right? And then line up your debts. He goes through lining up your debts, like smallest to biggest and start knocking out the smaller debts first. So all that I think is really great because when you are straddled with too much debt, you know, not just like a house, right? But when you have like five or six different debt items and everything's pulling from your paychecks constantly, like you, you can't get ahead at that point. And all of your labor, all of your work and time is ultimately just paying for interest for like bankers and stuff, right? You're just paying for the interest on your debts. So you end up in like this vicious cycle. So you have to knock the debts out before you really start accruing wealth. A lot of debts have to go away, you know? And a lot of what he talks about in this book too, if I remember properly is, you know, debt that's, you know, lower than the inflation rate, right? So credit card, Credit cards, which are like 17% inflation or interest, sorry, 17% interest or whatever crazy credit card numbers exist out there, you want to get rid of those first. If you have a mortgage that's like 2.5%, maybe you got it like a year or two years ago, you have 2.5% interest rate on your loan, then you can leave that around a while, right? So I don't want to ramble too much about this book, but if you know nothing about money at all, this is a great place to start your journey. Again, Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover. This video is going to be a while, so you know, buckle up or leave. I don't care. So the next book on my journey here, after I read that and I kind of started doing those steps, and then you hit a point with the seven-step plan where you're like, okay, well, now he's basically told me to, like he literally says in the book to like eat rice and beans if you have to, to save up money for a down payment on a home, which is unrealistic. Like you're not really in today's environment just going to save up. I mean, what's 20% on a home nowadays like? hundred thousand dollars it's very difficult just to get a hundred thousand dollars cash just by working one job with a single income right very hard to do that so that's kind of where in the next step of my journey um, you read rich dad poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki right again like preface this every book has its flaws you don't just take everything in every single book as gospel you have to discern you have to trial and error different things right just figure it out but in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he breaks down a lot of like the economic terms in their basis, right? Like, like what is an asset? What is a liability? Uh, things like that. He talks about investing, uh, finding ways to create money out of nothing, starting businesses, things like that. And so it gives you a lot more once you've learned like once you're at a place where your debts are in control and you have some breathing room, maybe you have that emergency fund and you're like, OK, cool, like. I have a mortgage payment, I have some debt, like, okay, but I'm making more than I'm spending. That's what Dave Ramsey helps with, right? Okay, great, cool. Then you can kind of stop at his step five or six or whatever it is, right? And you can say, okay, hey, all right, now I want to exponentially grow. So that's where this book really helps you out with, is it teaches you, if you read it again, right? Like all this takes reading. And if you're not willing to read, to learn, to make yourself better, to grow, then there's nothing anyone's going to say that's going to help you, right? Like you have to put the time in to read these books or to do something, to go pursue a mentor, whatever. So yeah, so Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, teaches you pretty much all about that. Just exponential growth and in money, investing, assets, liabilities, um, getting your terminology straight and so that you can like learn the language of money. And then it also breaks down the different categories of people, right? Like you're either an employee, you're a business owner, you're a corporation, you're an investor, whatever, right? It, uh, you know, E, S, C, and I, or whatever the different letters are for his little diagram that he's got in there. But it really like, you're like, okay, you know, it breaks it down. Like, all right, if I just stay an employee for the rest of my life, if I only work one job earning one wage, then I'm not going to be as financially stable or as financially free as if I maybe was a business owner or if I was an investor or if I was a corporation, right? So it kind of goes into that, right? And so this is like an amazing gateway book into just understanding some aspects of finances that people just don't teach, right? Especially if like, especially if your parents were poor, 
Your grandparents were poor. Maybe not poor, but maybe they're middle class, right? Maybe they were just bebopping along in middle class, just like, la-di-da, we're here we are, we have a house. Okay, hey, great, we have a dog, we have a couple kids, cool. But then now as things are getting more and more difficult, like if you were that middle class, you can't keep doing the same thing your parents were doing and expecting that same quality of life, right? You have to shift, you have to be dynamic. So, okay, enough about this book, right? So then you're at that point, right? Where your debts are down low, you got maybe a mortgage payment if you have that, otherwise no debt. And you're starting to invest, you're starting to tinker around a little bit. And you're kind of figuring out, okay, all right, sweet. You know, here's how investing works. Then you eventually get to a place where you start analyzing like hyper wealthy people, or you start analyzing, you know, financial events in like the country, right? Like in the United States, you know, maybe stock market crashes or it rises, right? And if you ever get to a place where you're asking questions why these things happen or how these things happen, or you hear about like what was what was one that was really big? I mean, this is like the last couple years. Uh, what was it? Um, AMC? Was it the whole like AMC thing? AMC and GameStop stocks? I mean, a lot of people got really wealthy on that and a lot of people lost their money on that, right? So there's these events that take place where some people try to get super rich and whatever, right? And so if you try to understand <coughs> how these things work, there's a very good book that I highly recommend, which is The Creature from Jekyll Island, right? Now, this looks like a scary book. It looks really thick, and it is, right? There's a lot in here. But at the very beginning of it, the author tells you, like, hey, um, yeah, the author tells you right in the foreword of the book, it's somewhere in here, but he says, just read the intro to each chapter first, right? Like, don't worry about reading every single chapter, just read the intro. So if you go to, let's open this up, chapter one, section one. Yeah, there's basically just like the first few pages of each chapter is basically all you're reading. Um, and it tells you all about what money is and how money works and who makes the money, right? Who prints the money and how these big events occur that basically create a lot of debt and then collapse it so that a small number of people can get very wealthy very quickly, right? So when you start reading this stuff, then you're like, okay, it gets you in the mindset of viewing money differently. So one way, I know this video is long, but you know, whatever, I'll get through it. I'll, I'll finish up eventually, but I love this stuff. So I'm going to stay passionate about it. So I used to view money as something that like I needed to save up for. Let me think of a better way to say that. I used to view money almost like it was like uh, bricks, right? Like that maybe that's something to think about. Or like it's like literally gold pieces and you have to just like stack them up, right? Like in your savings account. Like if I want a car that's $20,000, I have to save up the $20,000 in order to purchase the car, right? And that's fine in a way until you either A, want to own a house or until B, you own a business and then you realize you can't just hold money in tight and try to save it up to purchase the things you want. What this book, Creature from Jekyll Island, teaches you is that money is supposed to flow, right? And you can see that in like the etymology of all the words that surrounds money, right? So money is supposed to flow like water, right? That's why, uh, you know, in terms of debt, there's being above water or underwater in your debts, right? Like currency, is literally like the current of the sea, right? The, a bank where money is stored is like a bank of a river. And so it's, you know, this is kind of, this is stuff that like I learned from like Owen Benjamin and all these different podcasts that are amazing. Um, but that all the language surrounding money is like water because the people that make the money realize that money is like water and it's supposed to flow. So in Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he talks about cash flow because he's well aware of how money is supposed to flow. So the point I'm getting at is that if you are a little bit more on the financially poor side or middle class side or whatever, and you just view money as like, like you need to have, you need to have 20 grand in your bank account in order to feel safe, you're never going to get rich because the money that you're earning is just supposed to be a medium of exchange to purchase things that are actually useful to you. So when you earn the money, you're supposed to spend the money intelligently to get things, assets that bring you more money. And the money's supposed to constantly be flowing. And so of course you have your like you have your emergency fund. 
But outside of the emergency fund, it's like, okay, once you get above that emergency fund, buy something smart that's going to get you more money in return or invest in a skill or invest in tools or whatever, right? And so the money's supposed to flow. So this book teaches you all about how money is supposed to flow, why the money's supposed to flow, the very nature of money itself. Highly recommend this book. And the last book that I will tell you just to kind of speed this up a little bit, and this is from Uneducated Economist. He recommended this book, and it was really a big benefit. And it's called An Essay on Economic Theory by Richard Cantillon. All right? Looks like, I mean, it sounds like a mouthful, but it's really not that complex. The whole book is really short. It's an essay written back in like the 1700s, and the guy was French, right? So he talks about money, and he talks about the economic cycles of like nations, right? And if you want a breakdown, an in-depth breakdown of this book, I would highly recommend going to Uneducated Economist's channel on YouTube. He's got like 109,000 subscribers right now or something. He's huge. Um, and I remember back when he had like 20,000 subscribers. I was, I was watching, I've been watching him for a while. And yeah, he has a whole playlist, I think, where he breaks down each chapter of this book. So you could read the book, you could watch his videos on it, it's amazing, and it pretty much gives you insight into where we are right now economically as a nation based on these cycles because he wrote this book in the 1700s and you can go back to every nation that's risen and fell since the 1700s and you can see like, okay, this cycle holds true. So he talks about like the cycles of money and between all four of these books, when you get the knowledge that you need from these four books. You can get a better worldview of money and finances and what it is. And then you can end up at a place, hopefully, right? This is what I want for people. Like I'm not, there's a lot of room for me to grow still, right? There's a lot that we need to do. But I know that as a 29 year old living the way that we living, that we're living the way that we are living, there's a lot of people that aren't living that way. And so what I really want for everyone that's my age is I want for them to be able to be in a position if they want where it's like they're a single income earner household mom's able to be a stay at home if she wants kids are able to be raised uh, raised in a safe environment with love and affection right and then everyone has time to pursue their dreams right to pursue side businesses to pursue goals right to uh, to spend more time at church to work on their bodies like working out whatever right that's what I really want because if we, as a younger generation, get this stuff down and are able to learn how to be more financially safe, financially stable, financially free, then it has ramifications all throughout society. For one, the divorce rates markedly drop because a lot of divorce is based off of financial stressors, right? So the families stay together. If the families stay together more, then you're able to raise healthier kids, you're able to raise better kids, right? Which leads into the next generation being better. And then you're also able to get the ball rolling on generational wealth. You know, like part of part of our financial journey, my wife and I, is understanding we're like, okay, hey, you know, we started out at different economic places in life, like sure, right? But neither of us started off at a rich position, like super affluent, super wealthy, whatever. But we want our children to be. So if the goal and the pursuit of our life is to lay the foundations, to learn the knowledge, to pass it on to our kids, to get the ball rolling so that there's something for us to leave to our children when we die, then maybe our grandchildren can be the multimillionaires that have like seven kids and own multiple businesses, right? Like we can, we can get our family name to that place, even if it's not us personally. And of course, all of this is ultimately in the pursuit of making ourselves better people, being able to help people, and just doing what we feel called by God to do, right? Like, I feel called to raise the strongest family I possibly can. And so, it's not just all about money. It's not just obsessing over money, right? Like, I'm feeding our son just incredibly healthy, right? We go out of our way to buy very nice food. We care about that. We learn about that. Uh, physical fitness is a huge deal. Spiritual health and well-being, reading the Bible, praying every night, being grateful, that's very important. And then money is also part of it too. All right. So uh, that's pretty much that, man. Again, this is a long video, but this is something I'm really passionate about. So <clears throat> I will leave you guys with that. Again, uneducated economists on YouTube. Want to give them a shout out. And 
those books, again, are going to be in the description below on this video, so feel free to check those out as well. You can buy them pretty much anywhere. I'm just going to put the titles. So that's it. Peace. Take it easy.